Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. Over the past 13 years, I have owned over 50 pair of clip speakers, including all four of their flagship speakers from the reference series. Now these are the original RF7s, the RF83s, the RF7 version 2, as well as the latest series, the RF7 version 3. Now in this video, I want to share with you why I believe the RF7 version 3 is one of the best speakers that Klipsch has made. Now before we jump into the video, I want to give a big thanks to today's show sponsor, Worldwide Stereo. Worldwide Stereo offers a huge selection of home theater products, including the RF7 3s that we'll be talking about in today's video. They offer free shipping, a 60-day return policy, and are authorized dealers for all the brands that they carry. They provide easy online and in-store financing and have been in the business for over 40 years. To check out their selection, visit their website, or if you live in or near Pennsylvania, stop by one of their two showrooms. And if you like free stuff, each month they have awesome giveaways. This month, they're giving away three Bowers & Wilkins headphones, so be sure to visit the link down in the description below. All right guys, over the past 13 years, as you can see, I have owned a ton of Klipsch speakers. Now I wanna kinda of back up to why I chose Klipsch for my home theater as well as my two channel setup in my living room. Now back in the day when I worked at Circuit City, I purchased my first home theater setup and it was a Polk audio system. It consisted of the RT800s, the CS350, and the FX500 surrounds. And I paired that with a really small Velodyne CT100 subwoofer. One day I was browsing through Craigslist and I found a Velodyne F1500, which was paired with some Klipsch CF2s and a KV3. Now I really wasn't interested in the Klipsch speakers at that time. My intention was to buy the whole set. She was selling all four of those speakers for $250. And I figured I could keep the Velodyne sub sell my smaller Velodyne sub, and then sell the three speakers, and I'd probably come out on top with a little profit in my pocket. So I bought the system, brought it home, got it all hooked up, and the first time I cranked up some music, I literally was blown away at what I heard from the clips. I began to hear detail in music that I had never heard with my Polk speakers. I heard subtleties and I heard nuances that that just were there, they were present, and before they were kind of veiled and hidden. There was one in particular, I remember playing a CD and I heard something and I thought the speakers were distorting. And I'm like, man, what was that? And so I backed it, and it was a song that I was very, very familiar with. So I backed it up and I played it again. I'm like, what? The third time when I played it, I went, oh my goodness. All that was was his thumb or his finger moving across the guitar fret. But it was almost, it was like wow, wow. And so it was like a distortion. And I went, I thought the speakers were, you know, sounding messed up. But all it was doing was revealing the details of that track. I was so impressed by the CF2s. I ended up selling my entire Polk Audio system. I kept the Velodyne subwoofer and I began my journey to try to figure out what speakers sound best to my ears in my room. Now, a few years later, we end up moving from that house and we end up purchasing the home that we live in now. The floor plan had a 13 foot by 19 foot with 10 foot ceiling, quote, media room. And my envision was to turn this blank empty space into a dedicated theater room. Now, I really liked the CF2s and the KV3, but I wanted to see what else Klipsch had to offer. So I went to my local AV store, which was over in Orlando. It's about a 45 minute drive for me. And I was able to hear various models of Klipsch. They took me into one room and we began to listen to a couple of sets. And then all of a sudden they switched over to the RF7s. These were the original RF7s paired with the RC7 and the older RSW15 that I used to rock four of those here in my theater room. That system blew me away. Movies sounded ridiculous, incredible. There was so much energy, so much passion, so much just, uh, the movie demos absolutely blew me away. They were incredible. The sound was just intense. It was detailed, clarity, all of the emotion that you would expect from watching a movie, 
man, it just really excited me. But I looked at them and they had a price tag of about $1,200 or $1,400 each. And at that time, 13 years ago, I was broke. I didn't have any extra money. So I had to get a little creative on how I was going to buy these. I came back home and I began to look for local installers and AV companies um, that possibly could use a new updated website. I found a company, they apparently sold high-end gear like Bowers and Wilkins and Rotel when that was really big. And so I reached out to them because their website looked really cheesy. Now I've been a graphic designer and web developer since about 2004 when I started my business. And I reached out to them and I said, hey, your website could really use a redesign. I really need some new speakers. What if we did a barter and I rebuild your website and redesign it in exchange for you purchasing me the RF7s? They thought it was a great idea and I was pumped. When they went to order them though, uh, they found out that the RF7s had been discontinued and Klipsch was coming out with a new series called the RF83s. The RF83s looked gorgeous, they looked cool. Instead of having dual 10 inch drivers, they had three eight inch drivers. And I was just ecstatic that I was about to get a pair of $24 or $2,600 pair of speakers for free just for my time. And so I got the RF83s and oh my goodness, they had so much slam, so much detail, but they were still a little different than what I was used to with the RF7s. Now the RF83s were amazing speakers. They actually remained here in my home theater for a long time, several years. If you take a look at this picture, this was my old home theater, kind of like the version one of Youth Man's Theater. I had a custom cabinet made, again, I bartered for that, did a website for the guy, and he came and built a false wall. And as you can see to the left and the right, I had my RF-83s kind of enclosed behind these double doors, and they would fire through this grill mesh that was in front of the cabinet. I later purchased the RC-64, placed it above the cabinet, angled down towards my listening position, and at that time, I had a 103 inch screen built into that cabinet, but it was not acoustic transparent. So I had to mount the center channel really high. One day I was browsing Craigslist and I found an ad that had a pair of Klipsch RF7s, the originals, for only 400 bucks. Man, I jumped on that deal because at that time, those speakers were selling for about 800 to $1,200. So I knew it was an awesome deal ended up buying those and I gave them to my son to use as his bedroom speakers. Now I end up rocking the RF83s in my home theater for several years. And again, one day I was on Craigslist and I found this ad. I was mainly interested in the Klipsch bookshelf speakers because I wanted to use that in my son's bedroom. And so I figured, let me go check them out. When I got there, I found out that the seller did not have the models that were listed in the ad, but instead, they had the RF7 version two. And not only did they have just the bookshelf speakers in the center channel, they had the entire system. So to make a really long story really short, I ended up making three separate trips. They were an hour and a half drive each way. So a total of nine hours and I spent $2,000 and bought this entire system. I ended up selling the bookshelf speakers. I gave a friend of mine a pair of the RF7 version twos. He now has them in Alabama. If you wanna check out his home theater with those speakers, I'll post a link to his uh, home theater tour right up here in the card above. Now this was a few years before I started making regular content here on YouTube, but I did write an article about the differences that I heard between the RF7s, the RF7 twos, and the RF-83s. And so if you wanna check out that, I'll link a link to it down in the description below. It's over on the Klipsch community uh, forum. So at this point, I have the RF-7s, the RF-7-2s, and the RF-83s. And I loved that combination. Now here in this photo, you can see I had them set up in my living room. That was literally just for some ABC comparison between the three and just a great photo op. Uh, once I finished kind of doing that, of course, the 83s went back in the theater room, the RF 7.2s stayed in my living room, and the original RF 7s remained in my son's bedroom. So about two years ago, it was either like November or December, 
uh, Clips had made an announcement that they were coming out with a brand new RF7 threes, and I was really excited about that. So I reached out to Clips because a lot of guys were asking in the Clips forum, as well as the uh, various Clips Facebook groups that I was a part of, how will the new RF7 threes sound compared to the version twos and the version ones? Should I upgrade? So I felt that I had a unique opportunity. Not only did I have the Klipsch RF7s, but I had the 7.2s, and if Klipsch would be willing to send me the RF7 threes, then I would have the opportunity to share with you guys on YouTube, how do these look? How do they compare size-wise? How do they compare sound-wise? What do my ears hear? Um, and just really share some thoughts on the RF7 threes in comparison to the twos as well as the ones. Well, Klipsch thought it was a great idea. They ended up sending those to me, and I had them for several months, and I did probably, I think I did 15 videos, 10 or 15 videos on the RF7 threes, man. Number one, I was just excited because they were phenomenal, and I absolutely loved them. I liked them so much that I ended up inviting um, some guys over, um, people, some of them that I hadn't even met, but I had met them on like local Facebook groups, um, like the Clips Owners Facebook group and a couple other ones, and I found out they were in the area, and so I invited them over, and I really wanted to have all of us collectively, let's compare these together. So we put the RF7s, we put the RF7.2s, and we put the RF7.3s side by side, and we spent several hours just going through all different types of music. And at the end of the day, we pretty much all were in agreement that the original 7s were definitely by far the brightest. Um, they kind of had this harsh upper frequency to them. Um, they sounded great. They're amazing speakers, but they were definitely kind of like in your face. Go to the 7.2s, and that top end was kind of smooth a little bit. It still was kind of, um, kind of sharp on the top end. Um, bass was still slamming, bass was tight, mid-range was great. Um, and then we get to the RF7 threes, and Clips did some really cool things with the top end that really, really defines this speaker. Um, a couple of things they did, they have a new waveguide, so instead of a plastic horn, they now have a, um, it's like a rubber horn. And supposedly that rubber horn um, kind of keeps some of that top end kind of smoothed out, keeps the reverberation on the plastic horn um, you know, from happening and that kind of vibrating and causing some, um, maybe some discoloration of the sound. And then they also have a vented tweeter. So they had a new tweeter and kind of a new, um, I guess, shape per se with the vented tweeter. And so that too helps disperse that top end and just smooths it out. And guys, I'm going to tell you right now, I absolutely love the RF7 threes. Um, I've had a chance in my, uh, not only in my living room, but also in my theater room, to just listen to them in all different capacities. And every single um, thing that I throw out them, whether it's hip hop, whether it's classical, whether it's, um, I don't know, jazz, all different types of genres, all different types of movies, um, they just excel, man. They're an extremely, extremely versatile speaker. I think they sound great in home theater. I actually have a couple of videos on the RF7 threes, as well as paired with the uh, RC64 three, and they did a phenomenal job in my home theater. Um, but most of the time, I've had them in my living room in a two-channel setup, and I just love the way they sound. I've run them with just a Harman Kardon um, two-channel receiver that's about 120 watts a channel, and it sounds fantastic. I've added a um, Acurus A200, which I currently use right now, which that's about 200 watts per channel. And it just, it's awesome, man. I mean, I can crank, my ears will give out before these speakers will, literally. Um, like as long as you're feeding them clean power and your receiver or your amplifier kind of isn't getting kind of to its max capacity, these speakers will jam. I mean, absolutely, from the top end down to the bottom end, and there's no um, like breakup of the sound. The bass is nice and tight and punchy, and it will just knock you in your chest. The top end um, still remains smooth and intact. There's no distortion. 
um, they just rock. I mean, they literally rock, especially if you like to just crank it, feed these speakers some clean power, and they will just jam all day long. Now, I've also had a chance in my living room to compare them to a lot of other clip speakers. Um, I put them up against the Heresy 3s. I bought a pair of those, and I really thought, okay, the Heresy 3s are the Heritage, um, and those should sound better for two-channel music. In my room, it's quite a big room. It's like 15 foot by 25 foot with 12 foot ceilings. And then it opens up to a kitchen. It opens up to a breakfast nook. It opens up to my home office and it opens up to my um, dining room. And so that's a big space to fill. And something like the Heresy 3s just did not perform like I need them to. Um, they had good mid-range had very little bass. I mean, literally very little bass. Um, and they were just so short that the sound never, I, I just didn't feel like it was enveloping. It didn't like surround me and I just didn't get this big sound stage from them. I put them up against the RF7 threes, up against the Forte threes. Had a pair of those and kind of again, had a bigger sound, loved the mid range in the Forte threes. Thought that sounded phenomenal. They, the mid-range on the Forte 3s definitely does have a better sound than the mid-range on the RF7 3s, but literally to me and to my ears, that was the only thing that it excelled in. The top end was smoother on the RF7 3s. The bottom end had just way more slam, way more tactile feeling, you know, when you're listening to music at a, a good volume, and it just performed a lot better in my room. And the, even the bigger thing with the the Forte 3s, they didn't give me that enveloping surround that, that I'm used to with these tall, massive towers. The towers of the RF7 3s just kind of surround me with sound. I mean, like I said, the easiest way that I could describe it is just a big, wide sound stage, um, and it's just enveloping. That's just the word that I've always kept coming back to when I describe the sound that I get from the RF7 3s. It's just enveloping. It's almost like you have surround sound in a way, I know it sounds weird, but it literally just wraps around my head and around my ears, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful sound. So guys, as you can tell, I really love the RF7 threes. Um, again, I put them up against a lot of different speakers, and every time my ears just come back to the RF7 threes and just say, look, these are just the best speaker for me at least right now in my two channel setup. Now, if you're looking for some incredibly powerful, just amazing sounding loudspeakers, floor standing models for two channel, or even a home theater environment, definitely give the RF7 threes a consideration. Now I'll post links to the RF7 threes down in the description below, but I realize at $3,600, that doesn't meet everybody's budget. Now, if that's a little bit more than what you're wanting to spend, I'll also post some links to various models in the Reference Premier series, as well as the Lower End Reference series that you could check out from Worldwide Stereo. So I hope you enjoyed the video. God bless you guys. Have a great week, and we'll catch you in the next video.